So, uh, <laughs> blockchain, yeah, that's been a question lately, isn't it? Um, there are a few things to say. The first thing, I, I'd like to draw a very sharp distinction between blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Um, so, um, let me deal first with one and then the other. <clears throat> so, with blockchain, uh, it, this sort of thing could be very important. Let's remember, though, that the way blockchain works is by explicitly being as inefficient as possible. All right. And so, if that really scaled up to run everything, um, it would be an unconscionable crime against the climate. So the only way to use blockchain as we now understand it at the scale of computation that would be needed to scale it would be to find some survivable way. And in all seriousness, maybe the blockchain servers have to be on the moon or somewhere, you know, and uh, that might be a good thing to do with the moon. Um, and uh, and I'm not being flippant. I'm, I'm actually completely serious. It's possible that the blockchain idea is like, emphasizes rigor too much. And we need something that's a bit more statistical and, and much, 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 much more efficient. But now let's move to cryptocurrencies. All currencies are vulnerable to being Ponzi schemes, but they aren't necessarily. There's no like difficult mathematical mystery in how to make one that isn't a Ponzi scheme, but they're all damn Ponzi schemes. So the thing is, if we can't get over the grandiosity and greed of people in that community, we're like, it's not worth a thing. We might end up with a nasty surprise whenever the identity is revealed of the Bitcoin founder. I mean, it could turn out to be Putin or something. So you want to, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, I think it's perilous.